Welcome to the Educause Community Conversation with Jamie Marisotis. Jamie is the CEO and president of the Lumina Foundation and the author of Human Work in the Age of Smart Machines. So we're really lucky to have Jamie with us here today. And let's start talking about the book. Welcome, Jamie. Thanks very much, John. Great to be with you. Is AI a force for good relative to workforce or this just tremendous challenge? Uh, ultimately, I believe that uh, what we know about technology is that technology has always created more opportunities than it's destroyed. But along the way, it does destroy opportunities. And so, you know, we've been talking over the last few years about AI and work and about what, you know, I, I jokingly call the robot zombie apocalypse that's coming because everyone seems to think that uh, we will see major, major disruptions in work. Maybe. I think there will be creative destruction and uh, building happening at the same time. I'm not sure that this era is any different, but what I do think is different in terms of what we need to do in this era is better prepare ourselves for this work that only humans can do. And that means that we've got to focus on building those human work traits and capabilities. So if meaning and purpose and dignity is what we want, it means that we've got to build our human traits, our, our capacity for compassion, for empathy, our ability to be ethical, um, our focus on collaboration and creativity. These are the things that make us uniquely human. Crises um, bring out the best in people sometimes, and, and sometimes that's true of systems as well. Do you think the, the cluster of crises we're dealing with now, COVID, pandemic, financial, do you think it's done that or, or is it just revealing fault lines in education and maybe in workforce training systems? I think that the um, overlapping crises of COVID-19, uh, racial injustice, the economic dislocation that we've seen have uh, done more to reveal the fault lines that were there and not necessarily take us down, down new paths. They've also probably accelerated what we um, needed to be doing, which is to recognize those important connections between education and workforce training uh, that we've been talking about. But you know, I do think that we've got to do a better job of making racial justice and equity core to what we do in the system. I do think that we need to do a better job of preparing people for these uniquely human tasks of ultimately recognizing that learning, earning, and serving are part of an integrated system, uh, not something that you're going to do once in your lifetime. When you meet with college and university presidents, uh, what, what do you go to those kinds of conversations wanting to stress? What do you think is the biggest obstacle to the kind of change you advocate for higher education? You know, part of the challenge for our industry, and it's an understandable challenge, is that we have become risk averse, in part because we have long been the engine of economic progress and social mobility for American society. So it's a classic case of aversion to, to risk and change because the model has worked very well for the country up until this moment. Uh, so I think that that's one issue. The second is a belief in the durability of the model, right? So if the model has worked up until this point, let's not upend it. But I think we have an opportunity and the opportunity for higher ed is that um, in this human work environment, what we say we've always done well is really about human work skills, right? So, you know, we say that our greatest uh, contribution to society is that we prepare people for a long life of work um, and, and living where they can be those critical thinkers and those problem solvers and those communicators and, and the people who can really be analytical and reason in a way and be ethical and participate in our, in our democratic system. Um, to me, this is the opportunity for higher education but in order to do that, we are going to have to change the model so that it is not simply one where you have to run through a time-based, uh, time-limited model where you're always focused on a core set of majors and learning opportunities. You need to focus on a much wider set of human traits and capabilities. And we're gonna have to do this over the course of people's lives. So this is not a one and done model from the higher ed perspective or from the perspective of the, of the learner worker. Well, you've raised a lot of questions, and I'm pretty sure a bunch of people listening have already logged on and ordered a copy of your book. I hope so, because I think it adds a really important voice to this um, crucial conversation um, as a country and really internationally. So thank you, Jamie Marisotis, for joining us today for our community conversation. John, great to be with you.